Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us from the secret location, the kitchen, somewhere in North Carolina. I'm Alison Fisher, and tonight we have a special guest. Can you tell us your name, please? I'm Gerda Hofstetter Gregerson. There we go, for those. For those who have never heard of it. Yeah, yeah so you're Gerda Hofstetter. WPBA tour for many years. Welcome, Gerda. I've known Thank you. you for having me. How long have we known each other now? You know, I've known you longer than you've known me. <laughs> Tell a story. Uh, well, uh, I've known of you since the very early 90s when I got heavy duty into pool and you were the queen of snooker and I caught you on television when I lived in Sweden and I uh, was pretty in awe because you had a nice stroke and uh, I guess a year or two later, you actually decided to cross over and play a pool tournament. That's right, in Munich. And I played it? in it too. Yeah, I was at the Munich Masters in, I think, 1991? Mm, right? I'm feeling 92. I'm feeling Maybe 92. 92, I'm feeling. Maybe 92, yeah, somewhere around yeah. there. So I've known you that long, and we actually had a lot of fun, but then you forgot about me. And when you really <laughs> wanted to hit made the a, tour... She made a really big impression. In 1995, you decided to come over, yeah. and you checked out. Uh, the WPBA. You came to the Brilliant Congress of America. Expo. I did. I came to the trade show in Las Vegas. Yeah, places, my and you ran into me, and all of a sudden you knew me again. That's right. And yeah, yeah. So we've so, known each other for many years now. We, yeah, properly for I guess twenty three years. Yeah, twenty. And here we are. Here we are. Us. We've been. We normally it. we normally have tea at the counter, but tonight is Friday night. So happy weekend, everyone. Sure. And this is a little celebration for going to being inducted into the recently into the Hall of Fame. She just got into the Billy Congress of America Hall of Fame. How does that feel? It feels amazing. Congratulations. I, thank you so much. Cheers. It's uh you have to have a drink to that. It's an incredibly humbling experience and I'm I'm really honored by it because it's a really elite club. And I've known of the Hall of Fame since the early nineties at one of the first events I went to. Uh, they've hosted a Hall of Fame banquet right? and I went to them from the very beginning whenever I had a chance I would always go mm -hmm. and I looked up to the Hall of Famers you know yeah. since very early in my career and I honestly would have never dreamed that I would be in there once. Yeah that's awesome. You know, so yeah. I'm very humbled by it and I love it. And I this... know that it's been a few days yeah, week. well, it's this happened know. last weekend. Right, yeah. it's a week ago since I've been the been open. So it sunk in a little bit, and um, I'm absolutely thrilled with it. Yeah, would you talk us through some of the little things you Oh, had? what happened there? Yeah, what happened the evening? What the evening. evening. The evening. Let's, so, let's so, reminisce. Well, I wasn't the only inductee. There was Kim Devonport also. Yes, wonderful. And he was, well, Mike Penoso, who organized the whole thing right. with the BCA. Mike said started the evening off, and he was a very funny speaker. Yeah, he did really great. Well done, Mike. We yeah, like that. yeah, he did a great job. Very funny. He started off with self picking selfies, yeah. which was very common. It's always good. And he had a good speech that he had planned out, and it did really well. Yeah. And then uh, Kim Davenport was the first one to be inducted, but his person who was supposed to induct him to the speech unfortunately had an accident a month ago, mm -hmm. so he couldn't make it in person. Yeah. But they had a video of him talking about him and giving a little history and you know why he deserves to be in there. So that was fun. And then Kim Davenport did an accept, acceptance speech and I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. He did a really That's great nice. job. Yeah, yeah, he did a really great job. And you know, he talked about the history and who he was thankful for and it was quite a lot of people and he mentioned all the people he played against, which was amazing. Yeah. And and he I I remember him ending this speech with getting really choked up and talking about his wife and how much he loves her and she loves him and they've been together for a really, really, really I, I know when I met them, mm -hmm. I think it was 1990 at the Wurkheim, the first WPA championship, right. world championship, the wow. first official yeah. one. And they were there and they looked like a Hollywood couple and it was so beautiful. And and Kim stood out because he had a really particular stroke yeah. and, and yeah. Great player. Great player. So I've known them for 28 years now, looks like. and. Yeah, so at the end of it, he got all choked up because their love is strong, you know, yeah. and that's what really matters. Yeah, it was really yeah. great. And she she still looks the same. Yeah. Kim has aged a little bit. Yeah. But he's still handsome. That's too. life. Yeah, yeah, that's life. That's life. So, yeah, it was really, really fun. And then I guess Mike talked a little bit again. 
And then Ava yes, did now, my induction speech. We have, yeah. we have a, actually a little guest appearance tonight. Oh. You wouldn't believe us because oh. we're going to reenact the Hall of Fame. Mm. But we do have a little guest appearance. Would you? Da -dum, da -dum. There she is. Da -dum, da -dum. The striking Viking. Here she is. Ava's joining us tonight. This is Ava. Mataya Lawrence. Karen when Gorse, I first met her, she was Ava Mataya. In the background. Now there. she's Ava Lawrence. Yeah, just so everyone knows, because Karen normally. See where my finger is? That's Karen, Karen Cole. Ava, where she's do you want to be? Like the between the two glasses of wine. Right, so we've got Ava with us. She likes wine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Ava did my induction speech. Lovely. How yeah, did that go? Was, she's never been for ever. I mean, well, you're Ava, Ava is the reason that I'm here, really. Yeah. You know, I mean, She's Swedish, yeah. Most people probably know that, but she was the first European player to come over and hit the United States. And she was and only 17, I believe. She was very young, yeah. and yeah, it was in the 80s, yeah. and so she was the first one. And I guess uh, she ended up staying here like, pretty soon after yeah. her first trip, yeah. And so she was the pioneer, and then she was she an illegal immigrant at the time? I don't know, I doubt it. Did she sort of come in and disappear for a while? <laughs> I don't think so. She got married kind of oh, fast. Oh, yeah. yeah. Getting married. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see. <laughs> no, she, so she was the first one. And then, you know, I when I broke out of Austria, I had my start in Austria, right? But then I moved to Sweden shortly after. I finished school, finished high school in Austria. Well done. Finished school, everyone. That was important. Yeah. But I, you know, finished school. And a week later, I went on a... To celebrate, it's a tradition to go on a vacation with your friends mm -hmm. that you graduate with. We went to Greece for a week. Okay, nice. Yeah, had a fantastic Lovely. time. And then I packed my bags and I moved to Sweden. Just a week like that. after, Boom. just like that. So probably very strange for my parents. My oh no! I don't know. Yeah, it's... Three other sisters. <laughs> yeah, they were more than I should. I'm not you. No, but it was it was kind of you know unexpected. Yeah. That I would just up and leave and never come back. Flee the nest. So I did. I yeah. fled the nest when I was 19 and moved to Sweden. And um, the person I was living with, uh, Jorgen Sandman, the reason I moved up there, mm -hmm. he was an old time friend. He went way, way back oh, with Ava. Right. So that was the connection. And after having been up there for a couple of years, it was Jorgen who contacted Ava and asked her if. I could come to the United States and you know check out the WBBA tour. Yeah. yeah, it was absolutely wonderful. So that's how you eventually came over to America. You stayed with Ava. I stayed with Ava for the first couple of months. The yeah. Austrian Federation, they've been so good to me my entire career. The Austrian Federation financed my trip. Oh, they raised, that's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible. I haven't heard of any other federation that treats their players that well, but no, they gave I me the money. <laughs> They paid my flight, you know, they paid my entry fees to play in a couple of tournaments and, and financed my trip. And it, oh, it was so amazing. So anyway, and Ava hosted me here in mm -hmm. America. She set me up. She lived in Grand Ledge, Michigan at the time. And she set me up at her house. And not only that, she let me drive her car. <laughs> I, was on, I was 22 years old, that right? So, <laughs> and a foreigner. Yeah. And she, she lent me her wow. car, which was this... Huge, it's light like, blue. It was, I'll call it a ship. Yeah. The thing was huge. I don't, I don't remember. So it wouldn't matter because I'm not that into cars. She wouldn't have known. No, I wouldn't say that. It was a, you know, an old time, a really yeah. awesome, old nice blue car. Build, big one. And she let, not only did she set me up at her house with a car, she also set me up with her practice buddies. Yeah. At this super cool pool room called Pockets mm -hmm. in Lansing, Michigan. And I would drive there from her house to the pool room and play with this room. I remember driving along the highway, you know, by myself. I was playing really Ken grown up. I was playing Kenny G in the car. <laughs> and <laughs> he was big at the time. And I and I kept thinking I remember him. I'm living the American dream, you know. I made yeah. it. I'm like I'm driving on the I highway. Like that. The oh came my god, it was so thing. amazing. Yeah. So anyway, I would practice with her practice buddies yeah. and then we would go to the tournaments together. And the very first event we went to was out west. In you, uh, the one you won. Was yeah, the very first one is Cape Francisco. Yeah, but it was across the bridge. It was in Oakland. No, I forgot. Fresno, no, no, what are we talking about? San Jose. It wasn't Santa Rosa. Oh my God, I forgot the very first. It was the 
in Listen, the this is what happens I'm when so you get sorry. a little bit older. This is 25 years ago, people. Listen, so. if there's any... Hey, Ruby, you've got a clue. Where yeah, it was, was, look, she's saying no. She's huh? saying no. It. it was in January of 1993, and it was the very first WPVA Classic Tour event. We've got the women had just broken away from the men, and they started the Classic Tour. First and I was lucky event. enough to be at that event. And not only that, I ended up winning it as an outsider. That's because you had Ava's practice exactly. partners. Yeah. 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 Mm. Not quite. Uh, I, what what we did do back then, though, believe it or not, like the winner of a tournament would take like 15, 20 people out to dinner. I did do that. Wow. So, oh, that's nice. Yeah, you're <laughs> running at a lot. So you lost all your money from that. By the way, everyone, in the, in the background, we have a researcher, Marsha. Oh, then I'll try and... And then we her. have Kim, our host. So the bad. usual. Producer. producer. Sorry, she didn't like host. She's a producer now. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so, welcome back, everyone. All right. Around the kitchen counter. So, anyway, did I, I remember too long, right? This was supposed yeah, to be about... Yeah, let's just cut her off. Sorry, let's just cut her off right now. Because I get all excited about it. It was so right. amazing. It is an exciting it was so amazing. amazing. Yeah. So, Talk again, back to the Hall oh, of Fame. Oh, back to the Hall of what Fame. What did you get there? What have you got so there? So Ava did my induction, and then I did a little acceptance mm -hmm. speech. Can I? Can Unfortunately, just, I have to say, can um, excuse me? I winged excuse it. Me. Excuse, <laughs> excuse me. I thought this is about my induction. Oh, I, oh, wait a I, minute. I was just. I was gonna tell I you that I, would, I did my speech, and then I was presented I I, you know, with this lovely green jacket. Oh, and not right. only that, yeah, yeah. not only that. Oh, I got a ring. This is special. This says, this has a we little. can't even read it, it has anymore. A, I can too. It has a diamond on it, and it says Hall of Fame 2018. Is it unique, Gerda? Are you kidding me? Of course it is. Well, like, uh, that like that. Uh, you know, not everyone has one. But, Excuse uh, me. Oh, sorry. It's, sorry. I thought yeah. this was about my induction. Oh, what else did you get? Sorry. sorry. I also got a plaque. Look at this. Look at oh, this. that's lovely. Oh, that's nice. That's and, this, really nice. and this is a keepsake. One of a kind. Forever. Yeah, one of my one children will inherit this. Oh, this is, is, oh, this is, oh. What, do you mean like that? Do you mean like that? Just like that, yeah. Just like, that's yeah. What I mean. So anyway. Oh, okay, thanks. Well done. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is what happened. Congratulations! Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it was extremely special. No, I'm, I'm going to get to one, but take yeah. it off again. We're getting to that age where you I get absolutely a love bit it. hot, hot you flashes know? and all I, that. I love it. I mean, what an honour. There's the hand, the hand, look. You just hand what, it over to the hand. What an honour. So. How are you doing, Ava? Are you doing all right? Yeah. Okay, good. Oh, Ava, by the way, she was an inductee in the year 2004. That's right. So even there, she was a pioneer. And we've got Karen Kaur there. Look, she'll probably come over in a minute. She's no, a bit she's shy. Happy with us, she's right? a bit shy. She's, watching, shy. she's watching TV. She, yeah, on her iPad. Well, she's trying to work the remote. She's trying to work the remote. And, work the remote. and Karen is an inductee of the Hall of Fame, too. Yes. So, yeah. What a very, famous very people. Very fortunate tonight. So can I talk about the rest of the evening? Oh, yeah. I did my speech. Back to Gerda. Yeah, I did my speech. Which I winged it. I would kind of regret it. I should have. We talked about notes, didn't we? We I talked about notes. I had, I had like bullet points of just the people I wanted to thank, but I forgot one very important person, which is the best corner woman ever, Aww. Kim Shaw. Aww. I totally forgot her. So good. that was a big Aww, You're doing it now. I'm doing well, it now. Well, here so, we are. This but, is the time. But not only that, it was like, it was, I don't know. Well, I should have, I should like have planned it out a little more. Like it was, I winged it and it was like that. Usually, well, that's what we're doing you, know, you know what happened? Can I tell you what happened? Since <laughs> I had to do it in January for the WBBA Hall of Fame, right? I winged it there and it went really well. Oh, I thought because it, it was from the heart. Oh, it was excellent. It was good. It but was then excellent. I think what happened this time, I didn't want to be repetitive. I didn't want to say the same things over. Not the same over. people, though. Not the same people listening. I know. But anyway, it's okay. It was, they, it was really overall, it was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And so then the official part was over. Mm -hmm. And then we went out for an after party. Oh, now that's where the fun now, starts. that was something I have to now say. Now that is I, where I have to say. That probably was can't talk about that. No, we can. It was very civilized, very awesome. There's nothing bad happened. It was oh. just a really, really good night. Yeah, Mike Panoso. Good people. Mike Panoso took us to 
a place in Norfolk that was like a prohibition era mm -hmm. kind of place yeah. with, you know, exposed brick, which is beautiful, beautiful. He never took me there after mine, so I don't know if it's your favouritism. <laughs> we'll talk about that. So anyway, it's like a group of 10 people, you know, yeah. all good, very good friends. Yeah. It was just a brilliant night. That's great. 2 a.m. So. Partied all night. I yeah. love it. I'm a lucky girl. So, um, we have some questions. Okay. So, we talked a bit about your background. Are we done with me now? No, no, oh. we're never done with you. We, oh, we okay. talked about the Hall of Fame. Okay. We're still trying to find out where your first win was. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. She's forgotten where her first win was because Terrible. she's had so many of them. But uh, in, the, in the meantime, <laughs> somebody wants to know what wine you're drinking. Well, I went to Total Wine today, and there's a guy in there that I really like, and it's a Cabernet, and it's called Muirwood. It's good. And we like this. This guy introduced me to it. Um, I'll show you the bottle so you can take a picture of it because that's what I do sometimes if I like a wine. And whoops, wrong way. There you go. And uh, yeah, not bad at all. We like this fruit forward. I like fruit forward wines. So fruit uh, forward. another good one that we, we we've opened tonight that they're having over there in that corner is a Pinot Noir, Santa Barbara. Pinot Noir corner. <laughs> So a little wine evening, this is cheese, little cheese little and wine, wine evening, cheese and wine evening. Yeah. With the cheese and, the and grapes. grapes. And the, Let me have a grape. Yeah, help yourself. Well, don't Although the, we don't want to move the set. Don't move the the set is perfectly placed. Yeah. Okay. Our friend Mary has tuned in, I noticed. Mary, how are you doing? Jennifer Beretta likes to come in and have a little no look. Oh, nine millimeter. I think it's nine millimeter. Hi, Jen. Yeah, yeah. Nine hi, Jen. Nine. How you do it? I don't know if it's five or nine or whatever. I don't know. We get the numbers mixed up. Um, so all you need to wine. know is that she's a dangerous weapon. <laughs> <laughs> and she's getting more dangerous as it goes on. Uh -huh. As the years pass by, she's getting, she always changes a little something. Uh -huh. Got you to go. <laughs> she always changes a little something about her game, which is good. She true learning. She's a true student. She's a student of the game. Yeah. You like that? Thumbs up for that. So. I have a question for Gerda. Oh, oh. yeah. Gerda? Yeah, here we go. From uh, John Morton. We know John. Do you have any tricks up your sleeve when you have to adjust for a table height? Do you wear different shoes, change your stance, change your grip? Okay. Well, I would. I do not change my shoes. Like I'm not one to wear heels on a higher table. I like to be flat footed. But I would just on a. I'm more comfortable the taller the table, the more comfortable I am. The more I can lean onto the table, the more comfortable mm -hmm. I am. So since I am a short person, I think in pool that is actually an advantage because you don't have to bend your knees that much. The, lo the lower the table gets, the more I would bend my knees. True. Right? Yeah. But I'm one who loves to be able to lean onto the table because mm. that takes the stance completely out of the picture. Yeah. So I was funny, and I was never a snooker player, but I have played snooker with you in England, and I always thought those were the most comfortable oh, they tables are. to play so on. They are, so comfortable. They're just the perfect height, yeah. and they're taller than pool yeah. tables, so, yeah. 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 So does that answer the question, or was there something Well, I want to, I want to chime, can I do a little chime in there? Um, I was playing many years ago in China in the World Championship Final, Fu Xiaofan, and it got right to the end, and I remember I sh took a shot, into the side pocket and I stunned it over and I thought this is perfect I'll land just here da, da, da. and then all the tables in China seem taller they are taller than over here right and I couldn't reach a shot oh <laughs> so <laughs> well, it was a, it, well I ended up using the bridge which I normally good with well, good I missed, it, yeah. I missed oh, you missed it. it was that year oh, it was that year okay. that I was five nil down and it went seven seven oh man Anyway, but that's unusual for you to miss with the bridge. Well, I know, but I tried to be confident and pound okay. it a bit. No, I shouldn't have. I should have just rolled the ball in and made right. the nine. And then, but anyway, my point is, I thought I could reach it on a table here. It would have been easily reachable. Right. Over there, all of a sudden, huh. I couldn't quite reach it. And I'm not like you, as that two foot long bridge <laughs> out your hand. She'd, she'd rather do that than pick up the bridge. Yeah, I don't mind the long bridge. bridge. Yeah. She sometimes I've watched her shoot with that much. <laughs> You can't even see the end of the hang, can you? That much cue out, and I'm like in the, going like this: Is she going to miss you? Is she going to jump? You know, but she's used to that. She likes that. I like it. Yeah. Not something I would teach, mind So you. anyway, to sum up the question, I would just adjust the knees. bending the knees and not on your knees. But, yeah, but, but regarding the knees, don't lean away from the table. Oh, Always lean, lean towards yeah. the table. So I'm important. Yeah, that is important okay. because otherwise the weight's coming away, and then you'll start lifting up off the shelf. Right. Lisa Ann wants to know, do you think it's necessary to gamble to improve the game? 
Ooh. Absolutely not in my case. I never gamble. Me no either. I mean, I I play very like twenty dollar sets with a guy locally. That's all. I wouldn't call that gambling. That's not but... gambling. That's just having an. I interest. never even did. That. I would try just as hard if I had no money on it anyway. Yeah. But don't tell him that. Please. I don't agree with that. I hope that I know. Not I know that that people say that you need, but I think just entering local tournaments puts enough pressure. If you need competition to feel like to get tournament tough, there's always local events that you can enter. I don't feel that. To me, you know what my problem always was with the mm -hmm. gambling world? I think it's not so much about the game itself. Gambling was all about negotiating a good game, which is to me like the hanging and bull fitting. And it's like, that's to me a side of the game that I never really appreciated. Well, not only that, in gambling, you can go on and on and on. Right. A tournament is you exactly. win or lose. Exactly, you get one chance and either you do or that. Yeah, so, and that's tough. Right. You know, you can't just come back and say, oh, I'll play you another set exactly. and I'll play you another set. Exactly. So yeah, so not necessary, really. Depends on the person. It right? really does depend but on I the person. But I think it's much tougher to play tournaments. Than oh, for ever. sure. Yes. Win or lose. Win or lose, yeah. yeah. Kenny, Kenny Wilkinson wants to know when Ali is coming back to North Charleston. Kenny, how are you doing? Yeah, I came down there, didn't I? I had a nice time with you all. Um, hopefully in the near future. I need to set something up with you. But he also mentioned, I think, about maybe getting a a couple of players to have a match that he would promote and uh what we could come and play me yeah we could come and play a match i still haven't decided yeah. if i'm gonna come back or not. can you believe this she's been into the last <laughs> couple of tournaments wpb <laughs> events and now she's saying i don't know if i'm gonna come well, back or not this is so funny. And share. <laughs> <laughs> no i'm still on the strides of if, 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 if I hadn't been pulled out of retirement into the pool scene with this WPPA and now BCA Hall of Fame induction, oh. I don't think, honestly, I don't think I would ever come back. I'm so happy being a mom. Oh, let's talk about honestly, that. I'm let's so, talk about I'm being so a mom. Thrilled. You can be a I guess you can, but I'm, you know, believe it or not. I don't. If I come back, I want to feel like I still have a chance to win. Okay. I don't want to come back just for a social yeah, just outing. Just to hang out. That's not me. Yeah, I, we're I, not I, like that. Are yeah, we? I would, it would never. A pool tournament would never be a vacation for me or a place to go have a good time. If I go play a pool tournament, I want to go and win. So you've never had a good time at a pool tournament. I have, but that, don't misunderstand me. I I think there's a whole bunch of players who go to an event because it's a social outing yes. for them. Yeah. You know, yes, they enter the tournament, yeah. but they don't feel like they have a chance to win and they, yeah. you know, just enjoy playing a game or two and then having a good time with their friends. Yeah. And that will never, ever be me. Yeah, I'm a, I, I'm, like I'm a competitor. I love pool for, mm -hmm. you know, the sport it is and, and I want to do well in it. Mm -hmm. And if I want to go on a vacation, I go to the beach somewhere with my yeah. family. Yeah, it won't be a vacation to me either. I agree with that. So, anyway, so back to my comeback. Right now, I don't feel like my game is strong enough to win a tournament. But at the same time, I've studied it so much in the six years that I didn't play because Dan made me watch it all the time. And I really have learned a lot watching mm. the men play. And mm -hmm. you guys too, you know, when you play overseas, yeah. I used to, you know, check it out the yeah. last few Keep, games. You kept your and eye in I there. I kept my eye in mm -hmm. there and I really learned a lot by watching. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I don't know. I miss a lot more balls these days and have developed the shakes yeah. and all sorts of physical problems. But that? I feel because like I know so that. much more. Look, look, so many people have it. Yeah. Well, a lot of people, I've seen players over time have the shakes. Right. Let, let, I just want to say something that I just want to get a word in, really. Sorry. Um, I'm just kind of joking. Good news about you. I've seen, I've seen players like Darren Appleton. It doesn't matter. Even it doesn't matter. Darren Shaking doesn't matter. like a leaf. When they're, when, they're, when, they're, when they're playing that final game to win the hundred thousand dollars or something, wow. when he was in China, he said, "I shook the whole way through it." Okay, so I've but that's different. If it happens here and there because of nerves wow. and adrenaline, that's different. So what have you There's, got going on? Well, I developed a condition where my arm just doesn't want to be in that position. Position. It's, they call it a positional tremor, but that's what I call it. But right. I put my arm up there and it starts a tremor in my, my, yeah. my arm. And you shake start. a lot. And then you? if I get into a tournament and I feel adrenaline and pressure, it gets even worse. Right. But I have it at home, just practicing all by myself, zero pressure. Mm. I put my arm in the position and it starts a tremor. So mm. that's no fun. But I have, I have to say that 
recently I feel like I've gotten it under control a little more. Right. Then, because I've had it, you know, I've had it since at least fifteen years. I think I've had it a long time, and and I and sometimes it bothers me more than others. But mm. and I know there's some people who play would just play through it, like Nick Warner. Yeah, Nick. I Nick's know a shaker. when I first met him, you know, in the early nineties. I mean, he always shook like crazy. Yeah. But then when he did his final stroke, he was able nice to he, he was able to ignore it and just deliver a perfectly straight stroke. Mm. So I know there are ways to deal with it. And I have worked on it and I feel like I've gotten a handle on it a little better than it used to be. So maybe I can... I think that she's going to come. I, I still love it. Let's put it that way. There's, there's still a little flame inside me that burns, you know, for pool. <laughs> there's so a little flame. There's well, a tiny little bit. It's still flickering. It's still flickering. So if somebody put a little oxygen in there, it's not, the flame's not out. I don't know if I'm silly thinking that You're I could still silly. do well. I don't know. Listen, listen. But you know me, right? You know me a long time. I've been through the lulls. Yeah. Like I've lost confidence. Things happen, and your confidence isn't there. And I recently went to China, and I went to an L. Right. Right. Disaster. Right. And I came back, and I went in that tournament WPBA event, and I won it, and I played some of the best ball I've ever played. Like a week life. later, yeah. or how much? Yeah. A week later, right. I pulled my head out and said come on let's right. you know yeah. and I focus so hard right and I think the game is about that if you can just focus in the moment really in the present so true anything can be done yeah I've learned one thing it's it's all about your oh, attitude God, whether you there. believe you can do it or yeah. not that's all yeah so look at this so you won a tournament back in and then you won one 10 years later oh, yeah let's talk about that all right so I had a pretty good career started in 93 yeah won two events in 93, two in 94. I, I won at least one tournament every year, I think up to 2000, right. right? And I was very consistent. If I didn't win, I was still always in the top eight, mm -hmm. maybe ninth here and there. But yeah. I was very consistent top player. And then the last event uh, I won was in the year 2000. And then nothing for 10 years. Now that's a long time. <laughs> but, and she came back. But it's not that I missed any <laughs> tournaments. I played every single tournament. I went to school during that year. You know, I went to NYU for four years. Yeah. And I learned to play golf and I did other things. But I was still very much, in. that was my main thing, to play pool. Yeah. And, and I did well, but I never won another tournament yeah. until 2010. Now, what do you amazing. attribute that to? What was going on? Well, Life I had... Changing. Yeah, life changed dramatically. Yeah, I had met, I met my Dan, my Danny boy, in right. 2007. Did you see Mr. Gregerson? Yes, that's, yeah. The father of your children. The father of my yeah, children, exactly, yeah. yeah. He, he had a huge impact on me. Yeah. And he, You were meditating a lot? Or, yes. Yeah? Yeah, he's a very spiritual person and he taught me to get rid of all kinds of distractions and, you know, what to focus on. And we meditated together and... It made a big difference. That's great. It calmed so, you. Yeah, and... totally. Yeah. So. Can so... you can you levitate? <laughs> if I drink enough. <laughs> You're going to see us floating up in a minute. No. Probably like that. Oh, suddenly going up. No. So, yeah. So he just, you know, showed me a different aspect of the game. And it really helped. So, yeah, I uh, contribute. You know, so. That win. What, what were you feeling before that? You know, like if you were in a tournament, sitting in your chair. Well, I'm somebody who thinks way too much. I'm in my head like all the time. Like my, my over thoughts are raising. Yeah. I overanalyze anything. I think too much. I get distracted left and right. I, I'm, I care about what people think. I get embarrassed. I'm, I'm just mentally not very strong. Yeah. And back then, yeah, through the meditation, it just taught me to focus on something else, not my head. Right. So were you thinking so, about your feet? All sorts of things. It, it, yeah, I focused more being, like feeling my body versus being in my head. That's good. Yeah. yeah. That's, the head is... That, a, that sums head, it up. Get yeah, out of your head yeah, get out and get head. into your body. That's basically. exactly right. Be so, present. And, yeah. and that's a hard thing to... It's not easy for Oh, it's everyone. very... It's a, it's a huge effort. It yeah, is. it doesn't come easy. Because you're very exposed anyway. as a player. Very. When you're you're a player, you're vulnerable. Out, you're vulnerable. When you're walking out in front of an audience, yeah. you're exposed, aren't right. you, really? And you have to either enjoy that right. 
or you're going to fall apart, aren't you? Some exactly. people really fall apart with that pressure. Right. So you have to kind of look forward to it yeah. because it is something, at the end of the day, the game is something you enjoy. Right. You love to play the game. So now going back to the right, so this was the start of something good, I think, but then I got pregnant. So. <laughs> you are <amazing. laughs> Yeah, that, wow. yeah, same year, 2010, I win that tournament. It was all going well. I feel great. And then I got pregnant. And I'm, but you got screwed nothing that. better could ever happen to me. I mean, talk about, talk about, you know, a change in your life that's unexpected and it just overtakes you like and and your first giving birth to your first child was like shell and peas wasn't it i mean it was like <laughs> you didn't even know when she was oh there well and... she was a month early is oh, that what you're referring yes, to yes sophie. yes sophie so i i thought i was going to, i was uh still had still a month to go to my due date but something didn't feel right and i called my doctor <laughs> and she uh, what are you doing at Ava's at the time? Oh, Ava and I went were on vacation literally the night before. I came, I drove home from. Uh, She's a green. Ava, where were we, Ava? Somewhere down there. Oh, you Walton. went somewhere. You two went, Walton. didn't you? Or something? Oh, yeah, God. somewhere. So bad she's forgotten everything stuff. she's done. So, she's so Dan and no, Mitch, Ava and Mitch and Dan and I were yeah. supposed to go on this vacation. We had rented a house by the beach. Yeah. Very last minute, Dan had something happening in business. He couldn't go. And then Mitch, same thing. Something came up. He couldn't go. So Ava and I, are we going to cancel? Are we gonna, of course we're going to go. So the two of us, we went. We had a great time at the yeah. beach. And I drove home. It was a four-hour car ride. I remember that. Right. I'm eight months pregnant, right? And I drive home back to Charlotte on Friday. And then on Saturday, I felt really funny. And I called my doctor and she said, better get to the hospital just to be safe, just for a checkup. And I go there and four hours later, I gave birth to Sophie. Oh my God. <laughs> you didn't even so, know it was happening. No, and you just gave birth. no, you know what's so funny? Hours. You know what's so funny about that? I used to read the books, right? For all, all the way through pregnancy. Like I knew every stage, like what you're supposed to do and what's happening. <laughs> that right? goes out the window. That goes out. So, and anyway, towards the end of it, they tell you, you know, you need to pack a bag. With a hundred things in it too that you need to take with you to the hospital to be prepared. I went there with nothing, like literally nothing, and I had an awesome birth. And, there you, you go. Know, you knock them out. So that there's a you don't need a bag, <laughs> do you? We need to bag. Really. <laughs> so we came. I went there at four p.m. So we came at eight. And wow. And then you're out there. For Boom. And then we and show them. <laughs> this is a. Uh, Oh, that's a silly picture. Hold on. Sophie that's... and Maddie. It's not. It's Why is her mouth open like that? What She's... are you doing? This is Kim. That's you know, funny. I love that picture. She's the producer. I love that the producer. Oh, this is this is Sophie, Maddie, and Pearson. Sophie, Maddie, and Pearson. Oh, yeah. you can't even see them there. This is Kim again choosing. And it, you can't even say sorry, to sorry about that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Lovely little girls. Oh. So that was Sophie. May I met Sophie, my first one, 2011, and then Sophie was. Uh, Sophie was seven months old when I got pregnant again. Oh my god. <laughs> so you're going to make another comeback, and then you got pregnant again. No, by that time I was hooked on motherhood anyway. Yeah. So, and I knew, I always knew, I never expected to have children really, but the few times I thought about maybe, I always knew I wanted more than one. No. Because I grew up with three sisters, and yes. I'm like, that's the best thing ever, you yeah. know, to have. That's nice. Your, siblings. Yeah, siblings, your playmates. So when I had one child, I knew I really wanted a second. And I was so lucky to. Wow, you got pregnant quickly. Back to back. And the fact that you were willing to do And I was so old quickly. already. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. Was, and they're wonderful Because I didn't have much time left. Let's not kid ourselves. You know? No, I don't know. <laughs> I was You're always having my You're champion. Turn, so. Champion at anything you do. Right. Yeah. So anyway, so Sophie and Madison are now seven and six years old. Yeah. And they're doing fantastic. They're now in school most of the day, you know, until yeah. 3 p.m. every day. So now you get a So bit now I have a little time again. Mommy. Yes. Yeah. And now I have time to practice again. So yeah. who knows if, if the WPBA takes off again. I'd like to think that I can maybe go play something. And I, I saw, I think Dean, our president of the WPBA, has tuned in. Has he? And I do believe um, that he's, he's hoping that um, 
six to eight, probably eight events next year. Oh, that'd be fantastic. Eight events. I think I'd be. There. I just saw somebody else who joined the chat. There's Ava. No way. Oi. Ava's there. <laughs> just joined. Hi, Ava. Here's your guest appearance. Look, Oi. I got you. Live yep. and in person. You're always with me, Oi. We thought you'd. We, we keep flying you with wine. <laughs> There you go, we know. I have a question. Okay. Yes. Carl Dorian, what is your favourite venue and why? Would you like you to? Me, you first, I have to think. Oh, gosh. Well, overseas, it would be the Amway Cup in Taiwan. That would be my favourite venue, um, just because we've been going there for 20-odd years and the fans have kind of grown up with us as new fans and people who were there originally, who were little kids at the time, obviously, because it's been a long time there. Um, and just the, the environment and live TV, it's just a fantastic venue. I think that's one of the best venues. Um, gosh, over here, over the years, we've had some good ones, didn't we? It's tricky. Was it Oklahoma? Oh, wasn't San Diego San really Diego. awesome? San Diego, San Diego was, was awesome. San Diego, um, the San San Diego Casino. Casino. It, was very it was a small Smaller. venue, but it was had yeah, such great had atmosphere. A, had a nice atmosphere. Nice view in the area for the players. Yeah, yeah, yeah you could go up above and look really down an aerial view for the players. And wasn't Oklahoma really awesome? Oklahoma was a lovely one, but we did we only do that once. Twice, or twice, at least twice. Or twice. Yeah. Um, Gosh, what else? There's been quite a few over the years. So Amsterdam Billia Club. Amsterdam, yeah. that was a classic that back was in amazing. the day, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, it's hard to tell. It usually depends on uh, how well you fan do. It, well, it depends on how well you do. No, but also the atmosphere. Also you know, you can have the most beautiful arena, but if, if you don't have a good crowd, yeah, what true. good is it? So very true. So yeah, yeah there's been a few. Joseph Bates. Uh, would like to know what ball do you look at when you strike the cue ball? Well, it depends on the shot that you're playing because most of the time for me it would be the object ball, so that would probably be 80% of the time. And then a few times you would look at the cue ball last, bridging over balls, masse shot, um, what else? Jump oh. shots. Cueing from the rail sometimes, I like to look at cue ball The break, a lot of people... And the break, the... sometimes a break. People are mixed on that. I think I'm different than most people. I know books teach you to look at the object ball first. Mm -hmm. I'm one who, early in my career, always looked at the cue ball last. You know, I would look back and forth, and but then when I had, when I feel like I was dialed into my line, right. I would look at the cue ball last. Nowadays, I feel like I'm looking at the line that I want to send my cue ball on. So you're kind of in between the ball. Yeah, which might not be a good thing. But that's what I visualize. Oh. I visualize the line that, I, picture, that right? I want to mm. send my cue ball on, and that's what I try to see. Well, I think a lot of it is about the timing of your stroke, right? Mm -hmm. You know I have that big hesitation. Yeah. Right? I have like, so what I do is I cue up, stop at the cue ball, slowly back, and then during that slowly back and stop, I'm on the object ball. Right. So I have a lot of time for my eyes to get there. Right. Whereas a typically a pool player would be stop at the front, slowly back, hit the ball. So during that slowly back is when you're sort of transitioning right. with the eyes. So I, I, I have a lot more time and I like to make sure I get my eyes locked in. Right. So it's just different for everyone. Kelly Fisher looks at the cue ball last Does she really? when she strikes the oh, ball. Wow. Okay. And she doesn't she, she says she doesn't want to do that and she wouldn't teach that, but it's just what she's grown I up. I think Ralph Sukir does too. He's the right. only other pro I know that yeah. who says he looks at the cue ball. So it's interesting. It's just what you grow up with, what you learn. You know, if you have great mechanics, you can really close your eyes. That's true. Yeah. At the moment, you should be able to run a rat with your eyes closed. Yeah. You should, you'd be amazed at what you can do when your eyes are closed and just cue in. But that gives you a sense of your head getting out of the way of the shot right. too. So it gives you feeling rather than thinking. Ramin Bhattahari would like to know, Gerda, Gerda, oh. uh, is there a book in your future? A life story? I do not think so. No? No, I don't think it would be interesting enough. There's no, honestly, I I, I don't think it, there would be a market for it big enough for it to, to justify that. I am it sorry, might be for me. That's I don't know. For you, yes, you are an international snooker and pool star, and you're known all yeah, over. Baby. It would yeah, be yeah, baby, yeah. But yeah, in my case, no, <laughs> never thought about it. 
I have another question for you from Howard Cooter. Uh, do you have any superstitions? When you play before you play? Not really. You know what? I'm like I'm like a numbers girl. So if I get a hotel room with numbers that I like, then I'm like, ooh, it's lucky. But if I don't, I don't think like I'm not gonna win. <laughs> well, we've got some. I think I had at the last tournament the WPBA won that one. I think I was in two, one, three, and I'm, I, I actually looked at it and thought, is that lucky? No, oh, that's so funny. I, it crossed my mind, but I'm not. I'm not super. Yeah, I'm not either. But if I do see numbers that I'm, I'm like, that's a good sign. Yeah. Though, but I'm not really. It's one, 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 lucky. lucky Pearson was born at eleven. No, 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 that's not my number. It's that's a lucky a number. Oh, uh, um, another question. What is it like when you two play each other? Oh, what do you mean? Oh. You should answer them. They're yeah. always, always, always close matches. There's no doubt about that. I don't think we've, we've ever had like nine nils, nine ones, nine twos. I don't think so. No, it's always been nine so. sevens. And she she usually beats me, I think. Oh, that's so funny you say that. No, I think you, I'm one of the few people you don't like to play. Let's I just think. get it out. On yeah, the I table. honestly think that. And I think it's because yeah. I know you so well. And, yeah. And, you know, you think if there's anybody who knows things about you that an opponent shouldn't know, maybe it's me. I don't know if Not that's flawed. it. But I don't think it and is. I think, I think it's and also, and also, I think you know what I'm capable of. Exactly. She, so, doesn't, she doesn't know what she's <laughs> capable of. I know what that's she's what? capable of. And I get scared so, of her. What you're capable of. I, I know I'm capable, but I usually have like low confidence and I don't feel like I can do it. But with you, I feel safe. Because you're my friend and I know you want me to do well. It's true. Oh, so when oh, I'm on a table I'm with you. I'm glad I make you feel safe that you can true. run the rack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, no, like, I know like deep all. down because, you know, because we're <laughs> close and we're really good friends. Yeah. You want, of course you want to win, but you also want me to do well. You don't want me to make a fool of myself. So I always feel safe as a player when I play you and you bring out the best in me because I have so much respect for you oh, that's nice. and I'm not so I'm not scared Jeez. to lose to you because you're so awesome Aww. you know Thank it you. takes away all the pressure mm. so I can just play and enjoy it and I love playing better players I always appreciate yeah, it's always playing good, better players so yeah. I think that's why we've had so many good matches we've had great matches over, over the years. years yeah and you know the Soren Eagle earlier on this year you know I was making my comeback and I played Gerda first round. She just and you know what? Oh, you know what really upset weird. me about that was that I did her induction into the Hall of Fame at eleven o'clock at night. She comes running out as I walk in the hotel and says, "Ali, Ali, Ava couldn't make it. <laughs> Can you induct me into the Hall of Fame, like the WPBA Hall of Fame?" And I'm like, uh, "I just got here and the induction's tomorrow. I had a sleepless night <laughs> prepping." <laughs> And did the induction, and then I played her in the first round, and she beat me. Not first round. Oh, your first round. Mm. See, this mm. was a this mm. is a funny thing because mm. I came to the stage. It's a funny I? thing, isn't it? I played, <laughs> I played all Wednesday and all of Thursday. I played stage one, stage two. You royal so came up. in stage nicely three. Nicely warmed That's up. That's what happened. My tiara was yeah. on as I walked in but the But that room. was not one of our prettiest matches. I remember at I Hill Hill, at Hill it? Hill, we kept missing the nine. Neither one of us. Yeah, it wasn't good. No, nobody wanted to win. So that was a I weird one. I couldn't. But didn't. anyway, you st yeah, whatever. That's Do you remember we had a lot of distractions in the arena? See, that guy was walking across. <laughs> it was funny. Just remember. walking across with a. I, I remember. remember all I, I remember is your mum was there and she asked if she can go back to gambling. <laughs> Do you know what my mum did? I hope she's not watching. At the end of the match, she comes over and says, oh, I'm sorry, darling. And she goes over to Gerda and she goes, Good luck, Gerda. And I said, Mum. I'm not out of it yet. <laughs> I'm into the B side, but I'm not out of the tournament yet. <laughs> and then she went off to gamble. So funny. Oh yeah, my mother. I have, a, I have a question from uh, Linda from Linda Boss. Yes. Where um, are your feet in relation to the line of the shot? That was a big sign. Is side. that for me? My oh, both. Oh, oh, I see. Both so too. if you if you take the line of the queue and you transfer it down to the floor, my feet are both left. Kind of, oh, yeah, okay. even the right one, which okay. is supposed to be under the line, but my, my feet are both left of oh, the line. Okay. But let's talk about the whys yeah. as well. The why is because I kind of have to get my body out of the way 
to so have room light to, to get stroke. clearance. Yes, yeah. because I I've tried the snooker stands where mm -hmm. you're like totally square and you yeah. kind of stroke next to your body. Yeah. I can't do that. That doesn't feel comfortable to me. Right. So I have to find a way to have a closed stance, yeah. but I still need, I need to find a way to get my to chest get out of the way. So, to so you can clear. come through a good follow through and right. be in the way. So I have to kind of move my body out of the way. I'm, and also you're, you're uh, quite left eye dominant. Yes. So that's another thing to think about because if you draw that, drop that line down to the foot, if you're very left eye dominant, you want probably that right foot to be slightly to the left of the line. And if you're very right eye dominant, maybe the right foot slightly to the right of that line. But we're talking fractions because the ball's only two and a quarter inches, so minimal. minimal. But at the end of the day, you, you want to be cueing in a straight line with clearance and have a something that you duplicate every time, something that's easy to do, right. comfortable. And, and the way you walk into the shot, let's face it, is way easier to duplicate than mine. Yeah, because, we've talked about this at teaching yeah. over years, haven't right. we? It's more reliable, yeah. The way the snooker players snooker. walk into the shot is more reliable. Yeah. And I think that's why you're superior. It's consistent, cue in. maybe. Yeah. It's consistent. Right. Because you want to send the cue stick back and forth in a straight line, and we're kind of lined up with the shot like that. And and um, nine millimeter, Jennifer Beretta, I've noticed you squared up a lot. Don't think I haven't noticed. <laughs> Yeah, you've squared up a Can lot. Can you take that window away? Sometimes she's changing her grip, and sometimes she's changing other things, but she's squaring up now. And she's not oh. she's not uh, doing her warm-up strokes as much either. Right. She's aiming and slow Which swimming is good. fire. Yeah, you don't really need them. Think about it. Well, it's either or. Let's right. not, not, not say you don't need it. Short. Let's not confuse everyone. It's It could be some people What I mean take is short. you can do really, really well without a bunch of one -up You shoes. can, yeah. yeah, but some people like it as a rhythm thing right. and a feeling for the shot they're about right. to play. So, you know, it's not right and wrong. Right. A lot of people are joining you with mine, actually. Oh, cheers, oh, y'all. Happy, happy yeah. Friday. Thanks for joining us. Happy Friday. Friday. TGIF. Cheers, yeah. Cheers. We're cheers again. Um, and Wayne wants, Wayne oh, wants to sorry. know, are you two ever going to do the, the full school in paradise again? Hi, Wayne. We miss you. And all the other people, Jerry oh, Gray, Wayne, it's Wayne. Yeah, Wayne, Wayne, and Wayne. Wayne, Wayne. It's our Wayne. Robinson Crusoe. We would love to, Robinson Crusoe. That's yeah. That's he just travels around the world all the time. Um, but yeah, we would love to at some point. Well, I mean, we've been teaching for years, but we first actually got teaching with Mike Massey and Paul Pottier. Paul and what a, what a great time! The, we've had some wonderful. What a times. brilliant thing! And I think we were kind of pioneer. Our school was one of the first. To do it with that format, right? And it was a Definitely. great thing. Four of us teaching. I thought right? it was amazing. We used to the first day you get there, we'd get worn out because we'd rent a bike and travel around the <laughs> island on bike bike and have a picnic. <laughs> get but to my, know each other. Gosh, it was. <laughs> it was so fun though. It was we fun. Really Watching did... Mike Massey on a little bike with a helmet on his head was entertaining. We really had a chance to connect with all those students because we literally spent all day with them. You know, after breakfast. We yeah. taught at a lunch break, we taught, and we all went out yeah. to dinner together. Yeah, always And fun. we really got to know. And Wayne, and, they, and, and some of the people came back. Rick Rogers. Mo Rick Rogers. Aww, he came, he came for many, many Teresa, years. Teresa, remember Teresa? Yeah, we saw Teresa recently, I didn't know. we? So we've had, and that was done, the so very really first one Jerry was in Ray Hawaii, Ray. and then after that was in Vancouver. Yeah. yeah, and Jerry's online, I believe. He's watching. here too. Hi, and Jerry. And Dean, Dean, our our president's corrected us. It was Sandia and oh, Sandia and Albuquerque. That was a good one. I said Sandia, and it was Viejas in San Diego. San Diego, Viejas, yeah. Viejas, El Pine, yeah, that's good. Thank you. But yeah, okay. Um, the lady Tamara Leslie's got one of your cues, and she loves it. Thank you. Talking of cues. Thank you. A little segue, segue into no. that. Thank that, you. That My awesome. Alison Fisher Q what line, you if you're there? interested. What do you think about this one? This is one of the nine. You, I don't think you've seen this. Is that a. This is an Alison Fisher made by Joe Peachow. Peachow? Wow. And uh, that's got turquoise in it and ebony on a it's maple. Beautiful. Thank you, Gerda. Yeah. You can buy them from me. <laughs> if you want to make your big comeback, you can buy it here. But honestly, you can go on alisonfishercues.com. These cues are made to measure, so you can actually pick out the length of cue that you want. I currently use a 56 inch cue because I'm five feet four, but I actually could go shorter. Kim, producer, 
Yes. Um, host, producer, whatever you want to call yourself. Questionnaire. What size queue do you use? I, I actually don't know. It's 54, I know. Can I just say something? I Can recently experimented with longer queues. Mm -hmm. And like longer than the standard 58 inches. Yeah. And there's something to be said for that. A lot of the guys are doing that, aren't and they? And it just makes, it transfers the balance forward a little bit. Yeah. Plus it makes the whole... Oh, but action. you're using the joint yeah, I did not middle, exactly. not at the end. Right, I didn't but get a longer cue for those. I used one of those extension joints. pieces you put between the joint. And it just transfers the balance and makes the whole cue feel a lot more steady and balanced. I thought it was, I thought people should it try it shapes? out. Yeah. Yeah, it actually calmed down the shapes so a little something. bit, yeah. and it just made everything. And I felt I had more power; I could move the cue ball around a little more. Mm -hmm. So it's just yeah, food for thought. Fun. You should experiment and yeah. try it out because I know uh, Hunter Lombardo. He's, I know he's, you know fifty-eight inch cues go back a long, long time, right? Yeah. That was the standard. Fifty-seven originally. A long time. Is that Jerry, right? Jerry Gold, who made your cues. Yeah. Cognoscenti cues. Yeah. Fifty-seven is his standard. Oh, is that right? That's what he made. But then my husband brought up a good point and he said when they came up with that standard cue length, people used to be a lot shorter. People are now Well, the additives and preservatives were getting taller. <laughs> and, <laughs> no, but in on average, people are taller than they were a long time ago, so it would make sense to experiment with different equipment. Here's so, another pretty one. This is one I think Tamara wow. got maybe. This is one of the favourites in the nice. line. That's a pretty cue. So go yes. check it out. AlisonFisherCues.com He makes a lovely cue. It is a beautiful cue. I'm really happy with the line. Joey and Randy Tate say hi. Joey and right now Joey. Joey, let's talk about that. What I've been doing the last month. Right, it's I have been to the I'm the captain of the Atlantic Cup Challenge team. That's our USA juniors, and Joey is one of the players on the USA junior team, and he's only 13 years old and a great player, excellent for the future too. I mean, he's one of these players that's a mature player for his age, and he's only going to get better and better. And I think they're currently in Russia um, playing in the World Junior Championship. So I think we're hearing. From Russia, can oh. you believe that? This is a pie. Yeah. So, if you want to, do you want to, do you know any Russian? A Russian players? No. Do you know any Russian language? <laughs> Nastrovye. <laughs> of course, cheers. Soviet ekonomicheskoy I just made that. That doesn't mean anything. She's Nastrovye. That's all. She's that an really excellent linguist, something. you know. That really means She something. really is. No, you really are. Let's no, talk about no, no, please, please, no, please let's not talk like about what? that. No. She speaks. No. <laughs> can, can I ask you how you keep your concentration for so long? From Ian Stevens. Oh, I know Ian. Like doing a match or doing the whole tournament? Well, no, it right? really was about pl having played so long. How can you keep oh, focus? Oh, for like decades? Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, we've been focused for 30 years. Oh. Um, for, for me, it's easy to focus. I actually, it's an easy thing for me to slip into focus. I love being focused on what I'm doing at a pool table. And I, I don't mind, I can see distractions and I'll stop if something's really distracting me. But I often let things go on in the background. But there have been times when I've been a little bit, when your concentration isn't there, that's when you start noticing everything around you. Hmm. But I do love to focus. Can I chime in? Can I say something about Not you that is absolutely amazing? And it has to do with concentration. But with you, what you have, you have the uncanny ability to focus no matter what the situation, whether you're playing at my house for fun, for a, trying a silly shot, or playing a ringy ding game with anybody, or being at the biggest stage you've ever been in, you will always bring the same focus. And I've never met another player who's like that. You have so much pride in your game and your performance that it doesn't matter where you are, who you're with, and what the situation is, you will always give 100%. And I think people could learn a lot from that. Most people, they have a home game and they have a tournament game. And they like fool around a lot. And then, you know, when they think it counts, then they try to focus. But you, you focus. I've never seen you like you play little kid, you know? <laughs> Kids. And they're like, you're supposed to let him win. And you take that aim. 
<laughs> no, I'm joking. Sure. Yeah, that's not true. I have let kids win before. Yeah, she has let kids win before. <laughs> no, but, no, but that is that's the truth. You you love and respect the game so much. You give every shot a hundred percent, no matter where, when, what, and why. Yeah, and I think. Thank you. And I think, I think, think that's something that you have you've made up your mind that you know you play every shot like it's your last. Who knows if you're ever gonna hit another ball? Oh, that's the truth. You don't meet a lot of players like that. Yeah. So. No, actually, I know it's true. I know I do that. I don't really just mess around. I can't. I can't mess around. Right. Yeah. It's not a game to you. It's not it's a game. It's life. It's life. And death. It's everything. Right. No, I love it though. I love. I love. I love the the whole thing that you go through. Right. That's, I love the process. Right. Of playing, and I love the process of focusing. I mean, let's face it. The beauty of the game is like to picture a shot. In a certain way, and then if it comes off exactly the way you picture it, yeah. it's the most amazing it feeling. Is, yeah. And it doesn't matter if that happens in practice or in a tournament, yeah. right? It's just that a feeling that you can't, it's hard to describe. It's, yeah. it's like, it's, it's amazing. amazing. Yeah. And the more you can do that, the better thing. you are, the visualization. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. Have you got anything to say to that, Kim? I agree. Yeah, on a serious note, I she agree. agrees. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, you're very meticulous in yeah. Yeah. yeah, putting your little leg, your left leg out, aren't you? Yeah, I have to. And yeah, you do that little white like, down there. Yeah. You've got a little thing you do, things you it's go through. It's not superstitious, it's just physically what I do. Yeah. Right. Um, Lisa Carver, go to you. Um, besides, Why don't I finish my thought on the juniors? We'll go to Lisa we'll first. We'll come back to me. Besides your love of pool, what other sports do you like? Oh, well, um, I lo absolutely love tennis. I got into golf quite a bit before I had kids, but unfortunately I don't have time for that now. Ava's a good golfer, isn't she? Oh yeah, Ava and Mitch love yeah. golf. Yes, we yeah. really great golfer. Yeah. We 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 she took me to a driving range way back in Grand Dutch, Michigan. Did she? Yeah, way oh, way, 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 way back. back. Oh way yeah. Back. She was, yeah. I guess she had back. already met Mitch then and Mitch is a huge golfer. Yeah. So yeah, anyway. They're a match made in So I way. I guess she introduced me to golf, really, because yeah. I don't think I I had played before that. But what other sports? I swim at home. I have a pool at home, so I swim quite a bit. Um, for a while, I was very much into yoga. Not so much anymore. You are a certified yoga but, instructor. Yeah, Just but I never had. I did. I you did. did. Make, I did. 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 What I physically, what I actually do is tennis. I, I met two women at my fitness club, Martina and Rachel, who are amazing tennis players. Not never to and I spar with them. No, but she could be. She is from the Czech really? Republic. And she was oh. recruited from Prague. She, uh, oh, really? a scout was there and recruited her to play for the University of South Carolina. Wow. And I'm lucky enough to be one of her mm -hmm. hitting partners. You've we don't so play. Hard. Yeah. I'm so lucky. She she played in college and she's amazing. That's fantastic. Yeah. So that's what we do. But see, we don't compete in tennis. We just treat it as a workout and yeah. we just spar and hit balls. And For I fun. love it. That's yeah. nice. So yeah, it's that's the best. nice. Now you've had back problems recently. Yeah. Oh no! There was a slouch then. There was a definite slouch. I know it's the So what's thing, going on? It Is it spasms or what? No, I had a herniated disc a couple of years ago, and it. It's like it comes and goes, the back pain. Yeah. Right now, it's actually really bad, believe it or not. Have another, like, have another, I know, our phone another helps. Drink. No, that's silly. But in the mornings, <laughs> what's funny is it's like counterintuitive, but if I start moving, it gets better. In the morning, trying to get out of bed, I can barely do it. It's oh like no. I have to roll over very carefully and oh get out of bed. And then once I start moving, it gets a little better. But oh. yeah. I have time for it. So, okay. so if anyone has any remedies for all these things that we're talking about? Yeah, I think my problem is I'm not strong enough in my core. Yeah. Well, so I don't think I am. Doing either. more ab work, <laughs> and, yeah, I'm. that would help. But yeah, I'm a little bit lazy. A little bit cushiony. Plus, I still, well, you know, you know I, love, you got yeah, I love, I love caring. Not, not Jennifer Beretta, but we do. I love carrying my babies around, but now they're like over sixty pounds. So Madison is over sixty pounds. Oh, and, and, I still, she's oh light, and I'm like, she's and I can't it. stop treating her like a baby, so I still carry her yes, around. Yes, and, and, and it I really give a little piggyback. Right back, I do so the piggyback. He jumps on me. I, I need a breath. 
and I don't expect it. Right. He's just jumping on me. I love mean, his tuning in. Oh, Ginger! No way! <laughs> Christine Why is Fisher. She asleep? It's she not always up this late. Wait a oh. minute. What is it? One o'clock in the morning. It's wow. late. Yeah. So this Hello, Sunday, mom. this Sunday we will catch up with them. Yeah. Christine Fisher oh, yeah. is online. Yeah. Ginger. It's official. Ginger. We were just talking about you earlier about gambling. Anyway, at the uh, at the tournament. What is there another question? Because oh, oh it's eight o'clock. We we better. If you, if what well, we better go down the path. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we better wrap it up soon so people don't get bored. Yeah. Okay. Um. Oh, I was just going to do a to the juniors, though. Okay, we should not. They're going to play. The yeah. junior, the junior yeah, ACC, is. which is Atlantic Cup Challenge, they're going to play in Vegas in December, end of November, beginning of December. And it's um, USA versus Europe. And I'm the USA captain. <gasps> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Wait a minute. You're the captain for the USA? USA. Yeah. Who and Mark doing? Wilson. Is coaching with me and our team. Wow. Supporting? And we've got Joey, Justin, Shane, Caden, Michelle, and April representing. Wow, that's so. awesome. So please follow us. Uh, when we'll, is that happening again? That's the uh, end of November. I think it's the And 28th how can we watch November. it? There'll be a stream. I will put it out there closer to the really? uh, closer to the time. So it's exciting. Race to eleven points, different formats. So it's gonna be a very exciting for awesome. juniors. Did we end? I say any more questions? Um, yeah, come on, I'm not yeah. saying. No. Well, we will. Can you talk about yourself? Well, we'll, 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 well, that, yeah, oh, yeah, playing, playing yeah. here, we're not using a lot of power. It depends on the, how the table's racking and all that. How Scott it's Henderson wants to know, when you get out of shape, how do you mentally recover? Stay in the present. Oh, that's you what pretend I do. that your opponent left you that shot and you're happy to oh, be back at nice the table. Shape. Yeah, I mean, you, uh, if you get out of shape, this, you, why get bent out of shape? Can I tell you something? <laughs> can I why give you a little bent? word of wisdom? Oh, I like this. Go on, you heard it here. Pool is not a game of perfect. So you ask yourself the question, was the shot good enough? And if you can see the next ball, it was good enough. So be happy and deal with it. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like we need to fade out. <laughs> I think the wine is kicking in. Yeah, no. It's true though. I mean, you no, have to seriously, stay in the It's all about your attitude. Are you going to beat yourself up over having misposition a tiny bit? Do you think? Or are you going to be happy you're still at the table? Do you right? think, do you you think in all the years that we've been playing, we've been in perfect shape all the time when we've won tournaments? No. Not. No, it's what you do to recover. Right. That's where it counts. Yeah. Okay, good, yeah. And a lot of people are loving this, by the way. Oh, oh thank you. We love the chat. Yeah, we love it. We love it in the kitchen yeah. table in a secret like, location they want, they want to in support. North Carolina. It's a secret location around the kitchen <laughs> table, <laughs> isn't it? It is a secret location. Yeah. Uh, and are there any more super Do important have, questions? Uh, every question is super no, important. No, I mean, but someone. like, but like life changing. Like, like. Hi from Ava. This is my Uri. That's my Uri. She's the reason I'm here. Oh, cheers, yeah. Uri. Cheers. cheers. Uri. She's my Uri. So we started out as Ava. Now she's Uri. And that goes back to remember when when we started, we were all, at one point, there were seven pro players living here in Charlotte. And we used to practice at Mother's Billiard. Oh, I love that. I remember that when there were, a few, there were a few people and they couldn't pronounce Ava's name. They read her name and they said, Uri? And ever since then, this is like the mid nineties. Ever since then, we've called Ava Uwe. And, and then oh, you. Well, let's talk about your name over the years. That's oh, been butchered, no. isn't it? No. You've been Gouda, 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 Gretel, Greta, Greta. Oh yeah, I don't even react anymore because I'm like, really, it's that hard. <laughs> G E R D. <laughs> As a David, a girl, Gerda. Gerda. <laughs> you know what the problem is? What? I can't pronounce it properly myself. <laughs> that doesn't help. In English. 
in English. Gerda. Because obviously I'm from You've got that little southern accent too. And it's too. Gerda. Mm. Gerda. 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 Yeah. So that's it. Gerda. Gerda. You don't, you, don't, Gerda. You, don't, Gerda. you don't really hear an R. It's Gerda. Yeah, but when you come in. So, and, in here, English, and here, and here I Gerda. try to say it in English and I say Gerda. And I do the R and then and people Gerda. don't understand. So yeah, and anyway. I say Gerda. You, you, the English, you guys Gerda. say it really well. I wish I could say it like that Gerda. because it, yeah, Gerda. 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 I can't Gerda. say it like that. So, G4, we'll say it. G4. Gerda. Gerda. Yeah, hey, you know what's say funny? It, so. If G4. I really, if I really do make a comeback soon, I'm now the double G4. Gregerson. Oh, Gregerson. Oh, oh, double G. Double G. So she's going to be even more powerful than the she trend. ever was. People I don't know what that That's was when it was a double. double. I'm thinking of two kids. Double no, G. Oh, G. G. Gerda oh. Gregerson. Oh. G. Yeah. How powerful Good. is that? That's super powerful. powerful. By the way, I never think. You know who gave me that nickname? Who did you call? No. It was Monica Webb. That's a great nickname. Really? I thought it's one of the better nicknames. It is one of the better nicknames. And Monica, oh, yeah. Monica Webb well came up with that. And yeah. I was like, as soon as she said it, I'm like, yes. And I thought yeah. the Duchess of It's all right. I love that name too. What's it, it suits you. you it suits you. What do you call it? Duchess of Doom. Much better than the Duchess of Pain. Well, the Marshall. The place, yeah, yeah, I know you have several, so I don't know. Well, no, I don't like No, Duchess of Doom. Yeah, they're all fitting. Yeah. yeah, but no, the G Force is, uh, is a, a cool name. It's right? good. I like that. Yeah. 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 Well, you and Kim is the cooler. I'm the cooler. I don't know the where cooler. That came from. Ui, yeah. Ui is the striking Viking. That's a great yeah, name. That is a great name, too. No, it's a great name. The striking Viking. What about Karen? Oh, Karen's the Irish invader. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Oh, Karen, yeah. What do you think about that? Hey, we never even brought Karen over. Well, no, I'm, Ava, I'm just going to bring her in. Well, when we, no, when we wrap they it get along really well. No, they friends. get along very well. And Karen's in the hall. She's just watching some porn on TV. Oh. So, come here. Come here, Karen. Always learning. Karen's so awesome. Irish and famous. Karen is at the NAPT event at the moment. They're is playing in Montreal. One? Montreal. Oh, wow. Yeah, so. Good right. luck. You two talk amongst yourself. You, you have a little, have a little. The Prince of Tides was neither about princes nor tides. Discuss. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, we probably that, should, that, we that, probably that, should that. wrap it up now, everyone. <laughs> thank you for joining us. We've had a wonderful time. Thank you, Gerda. Oh, thank you. Thank you so thank much you. for having me. It was thank a lot you. of fun. Yeah, thank you. Kim. Thank you. Hostess yeah. with the most S. Marsha in the background, our research so, coordinator. Yeah, we've added to the team. Yeah, uh, yeah. Dee, thanks for doing the set. Looks great. Marsha <laughs> for helping out with lighting. And so uh, we look forward to seeing you again in the near future. Um, have a lovely evening. Have a lovely weekend. I'll probably never be invited back. So cheers. <laughs> see ya. Never Maybe. to be seen again. Never to be seen again. We'll see. Bye bye. Bye.